Hello everyone, here is question number three from both the 2024 AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC exams. And also make sure to look in the description below where you can see the link to College Board's website where you can see this FRQ and all of the other FRQs as well. So let's get started on problem number three. It says the depth of seawater at a location can be modeled by the function h that satisfies this differential equation where h of t is measured in feet and t is measured in hours after afternoon where t equals zero represents noon and it is known that h of zero equals four i think that part might come in handy later so for part a you are given a slope field for the differential equation and you were asked to sketch a solution curve for h of t and you need to make sure it goes through the point zero four now what's nice is they have already labeled the point zero four so we can't make that mistake and as best i can i'm going to follow the little tiny slope fields or little tiny tangent lines that are drawn in and go to the far left and right ends of the graph. So that's my best solution curve, making sure to follow those little tiny tangent lines. In part B, it says that for time values between 0 and 5, it can be shown that h of t is always greater than 1. We need to find the value of t between 0 and 5 at which h has a critical point. And then we'll determine whether that critical point is a relative max or minimum, or neither, I guess. And we'll justify our answer. So as soon as I see that h has a critical point, I want to recall that that's when dh dt, or the derivative of h with respect to t, would need to be zero. So that means we want one half times the quantity h minus one times cosine of t divided by two to be equal to zero. Now notice that the problem reads that h of t is always greater than one. So this equation would become zero only when cosine of t divided by two is equal to zero. So I'm going to think to myself, when is cosine equal to zero? And cosine equals zero at pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so forth. But we only want to choose values of time that are between zero and five. So if I want t over two to be pi over two, for example, I can see that t would have to be pi. But I think anything beyond that um, would not be between zero and five. So for example, if t over two were equal to three pi over two and t were equal to three pi, well, you can already see that three pi is not a value between zero and five. So it looks like the only critical point of h of t is going to be at t equals pi. Now we have to determine whether this critical point is a relative minimum or a relative maximum. So we need to think about the sign of the derivative, the sign of dh dt. And I like to do that by making a little sign chart over here. So I'm only going to go from zero to five and we'll put pi right there. And I want to label this sign chart for dh dt. And so let's plug in a value of t between zero and pi. And if I do that, once again, remember the quantity h minus one is always positive. So one half would be a positive number. h minus one would be a positive number. So really I'm only looking at whether the cosine of t divided by two is positive or negative. And if t is a value between zero and pi, that means I'm looking at the cosine of an angle in quadrant one. And in that case, that will always be positive. And then after pi, I am looking at uh, cosine values from quadrant two, and cosine is negative in quadrant two. So now we need to remember that if the derivative changes from positive to negative at pi, then pi is a relative maximum. So I would write that h of t has a relative maximum at t equals pi because dh dt or h prime of t changes from positive to negative. Now on to the last part of number three, which is part C, and this is probably where most of the points would come from for this problem. It says use separation of variables to find y equals h of t, the particular solution to the dif given differential equation, and this is where we're going to use that initial condition that h of zero equals four. So the first thing we'd have to do is we'd have to separate those variables. To do that, I'm going to divide by the quantity h minus one, and then multiply over the dt. So separating would look 
like this. And now that I've separated, I can now go ahead and integrate both sides. The integral of dh over h minus 1 is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of h minus 1. And the integral of 1 half cosine t over 2 is going to be 1 half times sine of t over 2. And then I'd have to divide by 1 half or multiply by 2. And then don't forget that plus c. Now we can go ahead and just add the plus c to one side. Um, just don't forget it. Because if you added it to both sides and then subtracted the constant over, you'd end up having the constant on one side. So with some simplifying, I can see that the natural log of h minus 1 the absolute value of h minus 1 is sine of t divided by 2 plus c because the 1 half and the times 2 would cancel each other out. Now, I'd actually like to, at this point, plug in the initial condition of the point 0, 4. Some people like to solve for h first and then plug in the initial condition, so there's um, different preferences for this one. So my preference is to go ahead and plug it in now. So I would have the natural log of 4 minus 1 equals sine of 0 plus c. So that would be the natural log of 3 equals, and the sine of 0 is 0, so it looks like c is the natural log of 3. Plugging that back in now, I can see that the natural log of the absolute value of h minus 1 is going to be sine of t over 2 plus the natural log of 3. And to actually complete this problem, you would need to go ahead and continue and solve this for h, or solve it for h of t. So to do that, I would raise I would um, raise e to the power of both sides, and the left side then would simplify to the absolute value of h minus one, and the right side um, would simplify to e to the sine of t over two times e to the natural log of three, which simplifies to three times e to the sine of t over two. And now, in terms of what to do with the absolute value, well, if I plug in uh, 0 for t, I would want to get a positive 4. So for that, I'm going to remove the absolute value and just make the right side positive. That would then allow you to plug in um, the h value of 4 and get a, or sorry, the t value of 0 and get a positive 4. So adding the 1 over, I can get a final answer that h is equal to 3 e to the sine of t divided by 2 and then plus 1. And there it is. We have separated and integrated and solved for h of t. All right, that's it, everybody. That is problem number three of the 2024 AP Calculus AB and BC exams. I hope you found that helpful. And um, if you did, make sure to check out my other videos. Have a great day, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.